Austria, the Luxembourg tiara, made by Parisian jeweler Marie Etienne, knitted. Thought to have been a gift from Napoleon to Princess Augusta of Bavaria, it came to Sweden through Queen Josephine Augusta's daughter, currently worn by Queen Sylvia. It includes 11 sapphires between diamonds mounted on a diamond base with forms of honeysuckle and leaves. The sapphires have been used exclusively by Queen Sylvia. The set is majestic, beautiful, easy to wear, versatile, and historic, so it's easy to understand why it has become one of her most used tiaras. Austria, Empress Josephine's Emerald Tiara, made by French jeweler Babst. This tiara originates with Empress Josephine, first wife of Napoleon Bonaparte. It was made for her by the French jeweler Babst, and is part of a pearl that today includes a necklace, earrings, and two brooches. This symmetrical diadem incorporates geometric emeralds in a neoclassical diamond design, all mounted on a frame of gold and silver. It ended up in the hands of Queen Josephine, who was a granddaughter of the Empress and the consort of King Oscar I of Sweden and Norway. From there it stayed in Sweden until it was given to Norway's Crown Princess MRTHA by her parents. Prince Karl of Sweden and Princess Ingeborg of Denmark. Ingeborg received the tiara from Karl's mother, Queen Sophia of Sweden. Austria, the Briganza tiara of 18th century French craftsmanship. Belonging to the Empress Amelie of Brazil, she had the design altered in 1820 to its current form, with rabesques and flowers in diamonds on a gold and silver mount measuring just under 5 inches. When Empress Amelie died, her sister Queen Josephine inherited it, and it has become a Swedish queenly tiara since. The current Queen Sylvia wears it for state visit dinners in Sweden and official portraits and never took it out of the country until 2007 for a Danish state visit. Britain, Queen Mary's French tiara, 1911 into a tiara made by Garrett. Once a necklace from Collingwood and Co. purchased in 1893 and gifted by Queen Victoria to the future Queen Mary, Garrett turned it into a tiara featuring 47 diamond bars centered by smaller diamond spikes. Queen Mary gave the tiara to the Queen Mother, who lent it to the future Queen Elizabeth II for her wedding to Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh in 1947. On the day of the big celebration, the tiara broke when placed on the bride's head and was quickly repaired by a jeweler from Garrett overseeing the process. It has seldom been seen in public over recent years. Britain, Delhi the Bar Tiara, 1911 made by Garrett. Created for George Worsley's wife Queen Mary, to celebrate his ascension to the throne. The Delhi Darbar was made with parts of another tiara and smaller jewels, set in platinum and gold with diamonds forming curls and overlapped by more diamonds. The piece walks in carefully around the wearer's head. Queen Elizabeth II has never worn this tiara in public. In 2005, the tiara was loaned to her daughter-in-law, the Duchess of Cornwall, who wore it in October of that year at her first official state banquet at Buckingham Palace as a member of the royal family. Britain, 
Queen Alexandra's Caucasian Kid Tiara, 1888, made by Garrett. A gift for the silver wedding anniversary of the future King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra. This tiara was inspired by Alexandra's sister, the Empress Marie Feodorovna of Russia. 1888, the Prince and Princess of Wales, later King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra, celebrate their silver wedding anniversary. A group of aristocratic women calling themselves the ladies of society decide to give the princess a tiara to mark the occasion. Although there are squabbles among the committee, they raise the necessary funding and commission Garrett to make the piece. Alexandra requests that it be made in the style of a Russian Caucasianate tiara worn by her sister, Empress Marie Fyodorovna of Russia, and Garrett creates a diamond fringe tiara set in white and yellow gold that mimics the halo shape of the traditional Russian Caucasianate. Queen Elizabeth II inherited this tiara upon her grandmother's death in 1953. She has worn the tiara for countless state banquets and events throughout her entire reign. She has worn it for several notable events, including meeting with the Pope in 1959. Britain. The Girls of Great Britain and Ireland Tiara, 1893 made by Garrett. This tiara was a wedding present from the Girls of Great Britain and Ireland to the Duchess of York. Later Queen Mary in 1893. It was purchased with money raised by a committee chaired by Lady Ava Greville who became one of Queen Mary's ladies-in-waiting. In November 1947, Queen Mary gave the tiara as a wedding present to her granddaughter, Princess Elizabeth. The Queen has worn the tiara regularly throughout her reign and is depicted wearing it on certain issues of British and Commonwealth banknotes and coinage. In recognition of the gift, Elizabeth still reportedly calls the diadem Granny's tiara. It quickly became a central part of her jewelry wardrobe, first as a princess, and then as Queen Elizabeth II. She even wore the tiara in Edinburgh during one of her first public appearances after the funeral of her father, King George VI. Above, she wears the tiara in a portrait taken on her 25th birthday in 1951. Britain, the Cambridge Lovers Knot Tiara, 1913 made by Garrett. Commissioned in 1913 by Queen Mary, and modeled after one owned by her grandmother Princess Augusta of Hesse. This tiara was inherited by Queen Elizabeth II and made famous by Princess Diana, who received it as a wedding present from the Queen in 1981. It was returned to the Queen's collection after Charles and Diana divorced. After the divorce, between the Prince and the Princess of Wales. It stayed unworn until it made an appearance on Catherine, the current Duchess of Cambridge in 2015, for a diplomatic reception at Buckingham Palace. To suit Catherine's darker hair, the base is now wrapped in dark velvet, compared to the light base during Diana's time. According to court Juella, Mary sacrificed her ladies of England, Tiara, and borrowed a pride pose from her girls of Great Britain, and Ireland Tiara to make the topper.
Britain, the Grand Duchess Vladimir Tiara, 1874, made by Bolin, the Russian court jeweler. The Vladimir Tiara survived the revolution and upheaval to become one of the most iconic diadems in the world. The tiara's original owner was one of the most important figures of the Romanov imperial court at the turn of the 20th century. Duchess Marie of Mecklenburg-Schwerin, a German princess, became part of the Romanov family when she married Grand Duke Vladimir Alexandrovich of Russia, a son of Emperor Alexander II, in 1874. Marie also had Romanov heritage of her own. She was the great-granddaughter of Grand Duchess Elena Pavlovna of Russia. To honor her Russian great-grandmother, Marie adopted the name Maria Pavlovna after her wedding in St. Petersburg. Her family called her Mikan. To the larger world, she became known as Grand Duchess Vladimir. The Grand Duchess Vladimir was the end of the last Tsar of Russia, Tsar Nicholas II. The grandest of the Grand Duchesses of Russia, her wondrous jewelry collection included this tiara. When the Russian Revolution struck, she hid the piece in the walls of the Vladimir Palace before she fled St. Petersburg. Until it was smuggled out by the British Secret Intelligence Secret Service in a plane bag. When it was returned to her, she gave it to her daughter Princess Nicholas of Greece, who sold it in 1921 to Queen Mary, and it was inherited by Queen Elizabeth II. The tiara has undergone many renovations and a complete reconstruction. Queen Mary added the Cambridge Emeralds as detachable pendants, interchangeable with the original pearl pendants, making it more versatile. The tiara has survived more than a century of life, including the upheaval of revolution. Only three royal women have worn the tiara in public. Grand Duchess, Vladimir, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth II.